continue on our journey to create the video poker project. And in phase three, we're looking at how to handle the holding of cards. So when I play a game, I can choose to hold a card or I can choose to also toggle the holds off before I click draw again. Whichever card I hold will remain in place and the others will be redrawn. So we're going to look at how to draw the second round of cards and then also how to handle our bets. So maybe instead of five, I only want to bet one. And it's only decremented my balance by one. Then in phase four, we'll look at how to check to see if we had a winning hand, display the results, increment our balance when we win something, and then we'll do a lot of testing to make sure that all our hands work. So let's go back to our project in Visual Studio. In phase two, we created the underlying code to deal our first five cards and make sure we don't get any duplicates. Now we want to have the ability for the user to hold any of those five cards and draw other cards to replace the cards they didn't hold. We also want to subtract the bet from the balance. So I'm going to double click on my draw button. And this is the code that we'll initially work with. So we have draw initial hand. Now we're going to use the same button for drawing both the initial hand and the second hand. After we've drawn our first hand, we're going to add a couple statements, and that is initial draw complete equals true. Remember we made that as a class level variable up above here. And I actually misspelled why I'm getting a squiggly, so that should be initial draw complete. I no longer get the squiggly, so that's fine. And then I'm going to do hide show hold buttons. I want to show those buttons and set that to true. Those buttons are behind the label named LBL results. So I'm going to take LBL result dot visible and set that equal. To false. I'm going to hide that label so we can see our hold buttons. And then I'm going to say hide show hold labels. I'm going to pass the value of false to that method. And then our button btn draw, we're going to change the title of that, so changing the text to say draw again. And I had that in all uppercase on that button, so I think I'll do all uppercase here again as well. Okay, I'm going to go up to my BTN draw click event handler. Right now we're just drawing the initial hand. We're using this button both for drawing and displaying our initial hand and then also redrawing the cards that we don't hold. So I'm going to create above the draw initial hand a conditional of if, and we have that initial draw complete. That's a Boolean expression. And we could say here if it's false, or we simply say, if not. And I'm going to move my draw initial hand into that fork. So if we're drawing the, the initial hand, if it's not initial draw complete being true, in other words, it's false, we're going to draw the first hand. We're going to call that code to draw initial hand. If it's not, though, we're going to create an else fork. And our else fork is going to be if not. And I want to look at those hold buttons. LBL hold one visible. Visible, of course, is a true or false. So if it's visible and the not makes it false. So if it's not visible, We're going to call a method of draw second hand and we're going to pass it the card number. 
In this case, it's going to be card one. We'll have to create that method, so we're getting a squiggly there. I'm going to do the same thing for all the other five cards if those hold buttons are not visible. So I'm going to take that conditional structure, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to change the ones to twos. So if the LBL hold two label is not visible, I'm going to draw a second hand, and, or call draw second hand method and pass it to. And we'll do the same thing for three, four, and five. So I'm going to copy, paste. Paste again, and paste again. So we need to create that draw second hand method. Before I do that though, after we've gone through that, I'm going to say second draw complete equals true. That was our other class level Boolean expression. And now we can set the initial draw complete to false. There'll be other opportunities to do this as we build out our code. I'm just going to do it here. So this sets it ready to play a second hand. I'm going to set the hide show hold buttons all to false. So remove those buttons. Our BTN draw button, I'm going to set its text to play again. And you guys make that all uppercase. So we need to create that draw second hand method. I'm going to scroll down. I want it to come after draw initial hand since we're alphabetizing these. And I'm going to add in private void draw second hand. And we're going to pass it an integer. I'm going to call it card. And here we're going to Have our integer random card again that we used earlier. We're going to do another do loop, and I'm going to do the exact same do loop that we used up here in creating our other cards. I'm just going to copy that code of the do loop and three lines after that. We'll use all of those again. So we're going to generate a number between 1 and 52. And do that as long as um, the used card has not already been used. We're going to set the used card's element random card to 1. So we're going to display the card. I get a little squiggly under i because we haven't used the variable i. Rather, this should be our card, the integer of our card. And then our current hand, element card, is going to equal cards element random card. Now I want to code those hold buttons. So I'm going to go back to my design and I'm going to take this label. I'm going to actually put it behind the buttons. So I can right click on this and simply choose send to back. And so now I have that behind our five buttons. I'm going to take the five buttons and select all five. And then in the properties, I want to go to the events. And we're going to go to the click event. We're going to create an event called toggle holds. Press the enter key. And there now in our code is our toggle holds event procedure. And again, I'm just going to 
take this, I'm going to cut it and bring it up to our vent handlers. I've got a blank line here. I'm going to get rid of that blank line. I want to paste this after my other vent handler for BTN draw. And I've got a couple blank lines in here. I'm just going to get rid of those. Okay, so here's our stub for the toggle holds. And it sends sender as an object in event RXE. So we're going to use that sender to, to the advantage of determining whether the label aligned with our hold button is being shown or not. So I'm going to create a button. I'm going to call it clicker equals, I'm going to take sender and cast it as a button. So I'm basically saying I guarantee that sender is a button. I'm going to create a label object. I'm just going to call it XYZ. I'm going to have it initially equal LBL hold one. And then I'm going to create a switch. And we're going to switch on the clicker dot name, whatever the name is of that sender object. And my first case is going to be BTN hold one. And we're going to set then XYZ equal to LBL hold one. And I'm going to break. I'm going to copy that case. And paste. I'm going to change the ones to twos in this second case. And then we will paste again. Change the ones to threes. Paste again. This time change the ones to fours. And one last time, we'll set these to fives. I'm going to get rid of my blank lines. Then what I'm going to do after that is simply say XYZ dot visible equals not XYZ dot visible. Get a capital V on visible. What that will do is toggle the visible property of whatever label we're specifying as XYZ. So if it is visible, it will hide it, and if it's hidden, it'll show it. So let's pause here and test those hold buttons. I want to make sure my current hand array is reflecting that second hand. So I'm going to come back down here to the draw initial hand. And I had that code that I commented out showing the message box. For now, I'm going to go back and uncomment that. And I'm going to test. Okay, so I'm going to draw. And I see what I currently have in my hand. I had a pretty good draw here. I got three eights. So what I'm going to hold are those. I'm going to click OK. So it's showing me the eight of hearts, the the eight of diamonds, the nine of hearts, the eight of spades, and the ten of spades. I'm going to click OK. Again, we wouldn't see that message box once we comment that back out. Instead, what we see as soon as we draw are these hold buttons. And I want to hold those three eighths if I can draw a fourth one, or maybe a pair to get a full house. So now I can click the Draw Again button, and we got a little error here. Index was outside the bounds. Okay, so let's figure out what's going on here. So my index was 50. That was the card number. And that card number should have been 1 through 5. As I scroll up and look at the code that called that, what I'm finding here is this draw second hand. I'm passing it a 51 rather than a 5. So I need to fix that. I'm going to stop my code. And we're going to start this again. Okay, so we're going to draw. This time I get two pair. So I'm going to hold those two pair. So I'm going to hold, 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 draw again. I'm only going to draw for that five of clubs. Now what I want to do is make sure those hold labels are hidden at this point. 
So I want to call that hide show hold labels and send it false. Because I'm going to play again so I can draw again. But those labels should not be there. Now when I click to after I click this message box to show what these are, that may change. And indeed it does. But I want to hide those buttons earlier. But it seems to be working. So I'm going to go back. And after I draw the second cards, I also want to hide show hold buttons, make that false. And then we're going to provide the results of our display in LBL results. So I'm going to go ahead and show that again. LBL result dot visible equals true. All right, let's try this one more time. I'm going to draw. And I'm going to go for the flush this time. Now we can see that our cards are accurately reflected in my hand. So I'm going to go for the hold on those three clubs. We're going to draw again. Didn't get it. And I'm not seeing what my current hand is. Uh, that was on the initial draw. So I need to add that into the other draw. So let's go back to our code again. So I'm going to take my message box here on that initial draw hand. I want to also show this on the second draw. So I'm going to copy and paste. And let's try this one more time to make sure that, that current hand is being updated. Oops, I got an error. Um, oh, I need an integer of i to find. Int i. Okay, let's try this again. So I'm going to draw. And there's my five cards of the hand. I'm going to say OK. And this time I'm going to hold on to just the ace. Let's draw again. And now you can see I'm getting a three of spades, a five of spades, a nine of diamonds. Still have the ace of diamonds and the eight of clubs. And I'm getting all five times. I, I put it in my loop accidentally. So I'm, again, I'm going to stop. So this is happening all five times we draw our second hand. I'm going to, this is not really where I want it to happen. So I'm going to come back up to the BTN draw. And after I've done those five, redrawn those five cards, potentially up to five cards, I'm going to paste in my, my message box here. All right, let's try this again. So I'm going to draw. I get the ten of diamonds, the king of hearts, the four of spades, the nine of spades, and the three of clubs. And I'm just going to hold on to my king of hearts, draw again. The other four cards should change, and they do. Are they reflected in my hand? Yes. Five of diamonds. King of Hearts, Six of Clubs, Seven of Diamonds, and Ten of Spades. When I click OK, I get the play button again. Accurately reflects. Now those, that hold label disappears. I want to see that, those, that the toggles work. So if I have a hold on, I can click the button and unhold it. And I can click, say draw again. Again, those cards are reflected in the value of, of current hand. Okay, so I need to have those draw labels go away. Actually, they do. They're, they're there because we're showing the hand. So I think, once again, we know that current hand is working. I can go ahead and comment out these lines. And do the same thing on we had the initial draw. This will give us a little more seamless approach to see if this is working. And so I'm going to stop and 
Start, restart. Just one line there. And I missed a line here coming out. Okay. All right, we're getting some warnings. We still have some variables in our class level we haven't referred to yet. We will down the road. Let's restart. Draw. And this time I'm going to hold the ace and king of clubs. I want to try to go for a royal straight flush. I could hold this one as well to try to get a flush. Let's draw, or I could hold the four, five, and six to try to draw straight. I'm going to go for the big bucks. Let's draw again. And again, those hold buttons should have disappeared at this point rather than when I say play again. So let's fix that. And I did high show hold buttons false twice here. This should have been labels. I thought I had taken care of that earlier. It just made a mistake in my terminology. All right, let's see what that does. Draw. Let's hang on to the king and queen. Draw again. We've got a pair of queens. The whole label's disappeared, and we're ready to play again. I should get five new cards this time, and I do. I'm going to hold those two cards, and I got two pair this time. So again, our drawing and second draw seems to be working just fine. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the C Sharp Xamarin Programming Cohort playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.